Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, May 20th. The time right now is six o'clock in the morning. I am actually getting a pretty late start to my practice. I usually get up a lot earlier, but I'm about to start my practice. Hence why I don't have any makeup on right now. And I have no lights in here because this is not, this is my kitchen. I'm telling you guys, I literally practice right in front of the dog bowl. Um, but I thought we would go ahead and address, um, Tomorrow, I'm going to be filming our video uh, regarding yoga. And uh, even though it's not going to air until Thursday, but I am recording it tomorrow. But I thought that I would go ahead and address um, some questions that I got about wrist pain. And wrist pain is super, 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 super common, especially for the ladies out there. Um, this is because of the way our bodies are structured versus the way a male body is structured. If you guys remember from our um, work on the spiritual stuff, like in the Magdalene manuscript and Kundalini and Prana, upon all that kind of stuff, a Prana is an upward rising energy, a Prana is a downward rising energy. We carry, all human beings carry both Prana and a Prana, but men are described as being pranic while women are described as being uh, pranic. Uh, pranic is the sun, the solar, aponic is the moon, the downward. And um, this describes the energy cycle. So a man, if you look at a man's body, they are much broader in their shoulders and have stronger arms. Their body is more linear. They don't have hips like women do. And women are more aponic. That's the downward energy. Think about it. A woman gives birth. That's very aponic. And so for a woman's body, our legs are normally stronger than our arms. And so what tends to happen in like when you're first starting a, a yoga program or any type of exercise program where you're doing things like planks in Ashtanga Yoga in the primary series alone, we have 60 chaturangas. And for women, what tends to happen is they tend to take their body weight in their lower body and dump it into the shoulders and the upper body. We have to remember that all the joints are aligned with each other. So a lot of times it creates like a domino effect. So if the shoulder is out of joint, it's going to push the elbow out of joint, which is then going to push the wrist out of joint. Now, vice versa, if the wrist, wrist is out of joint, it's going to push the elbow, push, push the shoulder. So what tends to happen with women? Um, I call it the chaturanga seizure is Women will take, and this is not specifically in Chaturanga. In fact, I'm not even going to do a Chaturanga for you this morning, because if you're not strong enough to do Chaturanga yet, you have to build up to it. So what tends to happen is women tend to get into a plank position. And because they're not strong, they tend to do this. They dump into the shoulders like this. And so when a joint is in its actual socket, it can bear weight. When a joint is out of socket, it cannot bear weight. All right. And a lot of women don't know how to uh, control the weight in their joint. They haven't been taught that. And because their body isn't conditioned to hold upper body weight or upper body mass, it doesn't really know what to do. So the basic thing that I can teach you, well, there's two basic things we can look at. Um, first is going to be protraction and retraction. And this is super important. So I have a block here. I only have one block. You can see my dog is actually chewed up my block um, because I typically do not work with props in my practice. I, that's not really something we use in Ashtanga Yoga because props can be um, enabling and inhibiting to your actual practice and to you getting stronger. But for this exercise, I am going to use a block because we're going to look at protraction and retraction. So this is what I mean. Let me put my camera up a little bit. Okay, I found a stool. So I think this is going to be better. So protraction and retraction. Sit up straight. Make sure your spine is straight because that's, again, the spine. If you can see with my sports bra, but the spine is where Shishuma is. So if you're sitting like this and your spine's popping out, sit up a little bit. Make sure you've got your spine in a proper straight line. So what I mean by protraction, retraction. So if we're sitting sideways, this is retraction. This is protraction. So when people are weak, you see them doing this in a plank, right? So you can take a block if that's easier for you or a book or a pillow and practice uh, protraction, retraction, protraction, retraction, protraction, retraction. So when you're in a plank position, 
So plank position, or especially a posture like downward facing dog, is a variation of a handstand. It's not a resting posture. It is a variation of a handstand. If you're in a handstand, if you're doing a handstand, you're not going to be retracted. That's not going to be good for you. Your body's going to naturally protract, right? That's the Aiken position as well. In sun salutations, it's a protraction of the arms. The shoulders actively protracting. And so that's what you want to catch in your plank position. You want to catch a protraction. So you can come to a plank position and you can try that. So retraction is this. That's when someone's super weak, they're retracted. Protraction is this. And maybe you can actually see my muscles, how they turn on. So retraction is this. Protraction is this. The whole body engages. Everything engages. It also cues the legs to engage as well. The legs have to be an active participant in these plank positions. You can also take a block or a ball and stick it in between your legs. I have my students do this a lot so that their, their legs are actively involved. Squeezing the block in a plank forces your legs to carry some of your weight, right? Instead of just dumping forward, they're actually helping your whole body move through this position. All right, so when you're in that protracted position where you're actually pushing away, you're stabilizing your wrist as well. You're getting the muscles in the wrist to activate, to turn on. And sometimes wrist pain isn't necessarily coming from protraction and retraction. That's just the big obvious one. Sometimes what you're experiencing with wrist pain, especially when you first start to do a practice like yoga or anything that involves a lot of planks, is you're literally just having to use your wrist muscles in a different way. Our wrist muscles get used a lot in our day, especially I, I write a lot. So my, my wrist muscles get used anyway. As a child, I play the piano. So my wrist muscles are already pretty good. Um, but with that being said, when you start doing this, you're using them in a different way. They're being activated in another way versus what you normally do. If you do exercises that in involve pulling, like weights. So one thing you can do, I have like two pound weights here. I do this sometimes. I'll just roll my wrist, wrist with weights. Um, you can do that as well. But if you're doing weightlifting, you're, it's more of a pulling sensation, right? It's, it's a pulling of the weight. Where in things like yoga, you're pushing. Another pulling type of motion would be for rock climbers. There are actually a lot of people who are rock climbers in Ashtanga yoga, and it's a totally different sensation. It's a totally different way to move your body. So if you're rock climbing, you're pulling. When you're doing yoga, you're pushing. So again, different activation. And so that's also a really important key as well. Um, physical fitness is something that's very um, gray. Like for my age, I know that um, I'm physically fit for my age in a general sense. However, my physical fitness is is up to par for yoga and for like bar, right? Um, I'm not a long distance runner. So if you had me go run like a marathon right now, I would die. You know, that would be too, that would, okay, my body's not conditioned for that. And so we have to think about it that way. When we are uh, doing exercise, whatever exercise we're picking, we are conditioning our body to that execution of energy, if that makes sense. You know, it's like we've been talking to Jamie Soleil a lot. It's like a figure skaters are super fit, right? There's like no body fat on them at all. They're super fit, but they're not the same type of fit as a swimmer. Same thing. The swimmers are super fit too, not the same type of fit as a physical or as a, a figure skater. Does that make sense? And so that's why it's also important to find an exercise and a practice that suits your actual body. Um, I have once upon a time, I was a long distance runner. I ran in high school and all through college. And um, as I got older, running just uh, didn't suit my body anymore. I started to get really inflamed by it. That's around the time I started practicing yoga too. And if you're doing something like Ashtanga yoga, you really, there's no energy to do both. Um, and so when I switched and I stopped doing long distance running, uh, my body healed itself. And so sometimes you have to also acknowledge, and a lot of that's going to have to do with your dosha too. Now, and, and also your blood type. So 
I am an O negative. A lot of athletes are O negative because we take in more oxygen. So things like long distance running, as far as my cardiovascular system, when I was doing it, it was easy for me to go for miles and miles and miles and miles. That was because of my blood type. I was able to take in more oxygen through my blood. However, because of my dosha being vata pitta, that's why the impact of running ended up being not so great for me. It backfired. And so you have to be very, very much aware of that. With that being said, though, um, don't uh, make up an excuse as to why you can't do something. So if you're just having wrist pain, that's not an excuse to quit doing things like yoga because that's actually really, really common. Sorry, my dog is snoozing right there. (laughs) Um, He's used to me exercising this early in the morning. But um, Wrist pain is not something you need to, you need to actually look at your alignment because as we understand, I've said this before in, um, I don't know if I've said this on a video, but I do say this in my courses. So we always, always tell my courses that there are three teachers in Ashtanga yoga. There's the practice itself, the actual teacher, and then the injury. So sometimes when we're dealing with an injury, actually, I would say probably 99% of the time that we're dealing with an energy, it's actually a karmic response. And again, karma isn't necessarily bad. All karma is, is your work. And so as I tell my students, the, the posture isn't hurting you. You are hurting yourself in the posture because there's a misalignment. And when the body is out of alignment, that means that something in the, the energetic body is also out of alignment. And if we fix the energetic body, we can then fix the physical body. So if you do feel pain, if you do feel discomfort, don't quit. Just go back and course correct. Figure out what it is that your body is trying to tell you. All your body is trying, if your wrists are bothering you, your body body is either trying to tell you that your shoulders are not in alignment, that you're not protracting, or, or that you just need to give it time, that your muscles and your wrists need to get stronger um, around this particular form of exercise. Um, You also, the second point of reference I want to tell everybody is watch your hands. So when I see students in like a downward facing dog, for example, and their hand is like not, where's my block? So say this is the floor and their hands kind of like this. They're not fully engaged on the the ground with their hand. I know that there as a teacher, I know that there's weakness and that there's a disconnect. And so sometimes I'll actually come and just put my foot lightly, put my foot on someone's hand to get their hand to press to the floor. You also, while pressing your hand to the floor, need to engage into your fingertips as well. If you see somebody in a handstand, I'll try to find some handstand pictures. I haven't taken awesome shots in a while, but I'll see if I can find some of my handstand pictures that show my hands. If you see somebody's hands in a handstand, they're like this. All right, the palm is on the ground and the fingertips are engaged into the floor. All right, because there's power in the tips of the finger. We talked about in the hands video, you know, where you can you can press into the palm and then you can press into the tips of your fingers. That's engaging an energetic response. So your whole hand is activated. Even in a plank position, it's harder to do to like lose connection with your hand in a plank, but if you find yourself doing that, 100% that's your body telling you to press into the hand, to push away from the floor. Okay. It's not going to be easy. It's going to generate a lot of sweat. That's good. We want that sweat. That sweat is what's detoxing you. And it's going to force also your core to start to react. You know, you, you don't have to get a six pack just from doing crunches. If you do things like planks or practice yoga, It's going to happen anyway because you're forcing the core to also engage with your arms. So anyway, I hope that makes a lot of sense. Um, I am going to try to at some point make a video about your hips as well and maybe show you guys some really intense stretches that are really good for the hips because we hold a lot of uh, hips are like uh, the junk drawer. You know how in everybody's house, there's a drawer that you just shove things don't know what to do with it. Like all these menus, phone chargers, you know, just kind of shove it in the drawer. That's kind of what happens with your hips a lot. Like all these uncomfortable emotions that you don't particularly want to deal with at the time get shoved into your hips. And so the hips get really tight. Even for people who don't have tight hips, I don't have tight hips. And I still deal with a lot of emotion coming from my hips. 
hip is the biggest joint, right? And that's where joints are where energy is stored. So I am going to be working on that. I have to figure out how to shoot that because I don't have the type of equipment to shoot like an exercise type of video. So I have to figure out how to do that for you guys, but I am working on it. Okay. If you have any more questions, physical questions about the practice of yoga or just any type of injury you're dealing with or anything like that, ask me down below in the comment section and I'll try to answer those questions. Again, I am going to be filming um, the yoga video tomorrow, Saturday. It will be released on Thursday though, where I answer some of your more um, philosophical questions about the practice of yoga. All right, guys, I'm going to go practice now and I'll talk to you soon.